Coaches, welcome to our zone family running game installation part one, our inside zone. <clears throat> so we're going to go over our blocking scheme first here, and then we're going to pop talk you through was our bread and butter and our identity play of our offense this year, which is just our inside zone read play. Uh, what we're looking for here is the ability to try to get some combination blocks up front if possible based upon the uh, linebacker that we're going to ID here. So if you look here at the screen, we've got a lot of notes and stuff that we give our players in regards to just the, the base fundamental aspects of this play here and what they should be looking for. Uh, we're going to go through the blocking and everything here as well as far as footwork and technique that we're trying to use. Uh, but this is going to give our guys at least something to start off with here that they can have on paper if necessary to look through what a standard block would look like. Obviously in a game it never really happens as clean as it would on paper. But to go through the blocking here, um, offensive line wise on our inside zone, we are looking to take a four to six inch lateral step to the actual play side. We don't get any depth on our step. We're not stepping forward. We're looking to take a four to six inch lateral step to the play side. That second step is going to be lateral as well and get yourself back to your midline or kind of that crotch area. Keep yourself square. What we don't want our offensive linemen to do on inside zone is turn their shoulders. We're looking for horizontal movement on this play. If we get vertical movement, that's great. Like I said, we're trying to get at least one double team out of our inside zone play if possible here. Sometimes their formation defensively does not allow that to happen, but we'd like that to happen if we can. So we're looking for horizontal stretch here and we want the defense to have to move and be fluid. That's what we're looking for. On inside zone, we're trying to create those horizontal seams and gaps for our running back to be able to run through. So our offensive line is gonna take that four to six inch step laterally and start that side to side movement uh, beginning again if we can get vertical push on a solo or a double team, even better, but it's not necessary. Uh, the real killer of inside zone, as far as we're concerned, is when you get penetration or you've missed a block, you're beat across your face, and now you've got that compression into the backfield. In, in this system, a, a draw at the line of scrimmage with horizontal displacement is a win for us. We just can't give up penetration and get pushed backwards. Running back wise, we are looking essentially at the exact same footwork here. Our running back's first step should mirror the offensive line on almost every zone play that we have. He's going to take a four to six inch step towards the quarterback. His second step is going to come again to his crotch, that midline point. Third step then should get him to the mesh point where the ball hits the stomach. And we're going to stay in a relationship with that offensive line and that footwork. In regards to the running back then on his, his keys, what we talked to our running back about on this particular play is it is a downhill play. There's no dancing, there's no juking, there's no side to side. We want this play to hit vertical and we want it to hit downhill as fast as humanly possible. You get one cut and you're vertical here. So we teach our running backs to have a read key on this. This is separate from the quarterback's read key. That's the guy that we're reading for the actual give or the pull here. Our running backs have a cut read key on this play. So if you look at the diagram here in the top box against the 4-2 or the 4-3 front here, our running backs are going to read the first defensive lineman inside out from the center for their vertical cut key. So in this scenario here, he would be looking over at that defensive tackle on the right-hand side that's in a three technique right now for his vertical cut. And we want this to happen quickly. So if, if that three technique were to play hard into that B gap, as our running back is coming across the quarterback's face and he's got the pocket opened up, his eyes should be on that cut key, okay? If that tackle plays hard into that B gap as a three technique, our running back is immediately gonna start to bend that into the A gap or possibly further depending upon his next vision cut there. If that three technique were to spike into the A gap, our running back will now bounce that ball outside to the B gap and replace him. Okay, there's a couple things that we talk about. One of the things I picked up a long time ago that we talk to our running backs about a lot is you're going to replace that cut key. So if he disappears from where he was, you're going to replace him. Okay, another thing I've heard that you can use with your guys is if there's color in your face, replace. So if you see we wear red and white, 
If you see a blue jersey flash in front of your face and a cross, then you're replacing where that blue had just come from. Uh, we do a lot of vision cut drills with our running backs to help train them on these things and work on those cuts. But the simplicity of that, reading that cut, first defensive lineman from the inside out. We count a zero nose guard, by the way. We don't start at a one shade. If you play a zero, we're going to count that zero as our cut key. So we'll start at the nose of the center, and then we will work outside from there. So if there isn't somebody in a zero or a one or a two eye for some reason, We'll go out to the three, maybe it's a four I, whatever it is, we're looking to make our cut off of that first defensive out on our inside zone play. It's really allowed us to hit this thing a lot quicker and more efficiently. You're going to see that on tape here in a second. Uh, quarterback wise on this footwork, he's going to angle his feet at about a 45 degree angle uh, and, and put that ball out and down for our running back to put it right in his belly and he's going to read the backside read key defensive end player, last man on line of scrimmage. If that guy were to turn his shoulders and crash, then we're going to do the disengage and pull. If he sits flat or stays, then we're going to go ahead and give. It's a very standard zone read look out of that, but our quarterback's footwork has to be a 45-degree angle here. It needs to match the meshing point of the running back in his relationship to the offensive line. So we're looking at a complete picture here as a whole that everybody needs to be in sync and we're very specific about how that footwork is supposed to be because if the offensive line is going you know too far with their steps or too too short with their steps that messes up the sync to the running back if the running back's too aggressive with his footwork it puts him out of sync with the offensive line if the running back's not paying attention for his cut read key then, then we get bad cuts and bad setups from the offensive lineman because the running back's not doing his job if the quarterback turns his feet too far then he cuts the running back off and the running back can't go into the normal flow and progression. So there's a lot of time spent on this particular play, but those are the real critical points here in regards to footwork and alignment and then execution of our inside zone play here. So we're going to look at some tape now and, and get through some of this stuff and show you on film exactly what we're talking about here. So, <clears throat> on this first play, to walk you through the stuff that we had just talked about here, our running back, but right here in the middle, there is a zero nose, okay? So that will be our cut key here. Our running back's eyes should be on that player. From that point on, depending upon what that kid does, we're going to talk to our running backs about what we call reading the triangle, okay? So here, here's the two scenarios that are going to happen. If this zero is our, he's our cut read. If this zero plays into the backside a gap over this way, our running backs eyes. Now he already knows this ball is going to go at least into the front side a that's it, it's going there. That read key has gone backside a this ball is going to press front side a his eyes now are going to find in this triangle, the other two players, which are right here and right here. That's where his secondary cut is going to come from if necessary, okay? So in the event that this 4i were to spike hard, let's say into this A-gap, okay? His eyes should have already taken him to the A-gap. He's going to see this color flash in front of his face, and that ball would have to now go out to the B-gap, potentially C-gap, okay? So the immediacy of that opening cut key is really important. We spend a lot of time with our running backs training that opening cut key and the ability to make fast decisions off of that here, okay? If, if we have this zero nose play front side A gap hard, the running back's course now is going to be at minimum backside A gap, okay? So he's going backside A, B, or C. None of these things are predetermined. It is all reactionary. We don't have a numbering system here. This is a concept play call. It is inside zone to the left, okay? We don't give him a, uh, a 21 or a 23. That pigeonholes our guys too much. So our running game is conceptual where we're going to teach them the skills within the concept to execute these things fluidly as an athlete on the field, okay? So here's how this one plays out. All right, you can see 
We do a really nice job. Okay, he's got good footwork. We're synced up pretty well with the offensive line here. We've got a couple cutoff blocks happening. He's reading this zero nose. And right now, as you can see, that zero nose is here. He's been reached by our center. Okay, this is, this is the immediacy that we're looking for. All right, we've got two kickout blocks happening over here on these two. His cut is, is at, at minimum is pushing front side A gap right now. His nose guard has been reached. That's our cut key. And because of that, the, the simplicity of that coaching point, you can see now how fast he's going to hit this thing downhill. It opens wide up, and we rip one off right down the middle for a touchdown. Okay? Here's another look now against an even front. We're going to get a double team on this three technique here, possibly, and we're going to get a double team. This guy here, number six, we're running inside zone to the left. Okay, this right here, that is our running back cut key. Okay, we're going to work a double. We've identified 23 as the mic. Center's going to work to the mic backer. That's his combo call. We're going to work number six to number 23. These two now, with that mic being called as number 23, they're going to work here to this 2i to number 40. And then this offensive tackle's got a solo block over here. This guy here is our read key. Okay, that's our read key. So for the running back now, his eyes are only on this three technique. That's all he's looking at. If this three technique plays hard B gap, okay, I know right now I'm cutting this thing at minimum A, and my eyes have now got to go back here to this back side of the triangle and find out what these two have done if I need to make a, a secondary cut here. Okay. That three technique does play hard B. You can see our running back's already starting to bend this ball tight now. There's no sense in going wide. You, you're not bouncing this play, okay? If, if you don't look at that cut key and you just stretch this to stretch it, you're going to run right into that, that B-gap player and the play's no good, okay? We really work hard on that reading of that cut player for our running backs so that this play can get vertical as fast as possible. We want horizontal displacement, but we want that running back vertical right now. And we have just found that this is the best way to do it. So we get a nice little combo block. Our center does a great job of squaring this guy up. And this is the next coaching point for running backs here, okay? Offensive linemen struggle in space, especially against more athletic linebackers. So what, what I do with our running backs is I call it getting into the wall, okay? I want them vertical up into that wall of linemen butts as fast as they can because that makes those linebackers have to play forward. If they don't play forward and they stay back at five yards and we get five yards automatically, so we win no matter what. But what I want is if you dance around back there, you're making that lineman play out in space a lot longer than he has to, and that's not a win for us. Okay? We want you up into the wall of butts and draw those linebackers into our offensive linemen and make them play our game. Make them play in a very small space with our offensive linemen. If you dance and juke around, you're leaving them out there in open space a lot longer than you have to, and you're hurting us. We want you vertical and downhill to pull those backers into our line. And you can see our center does a great job of breaking his feet down here, resyncing his pad level. Our backside guard is going to sink in here on number 40. Our running back does a great job of getting up into the wall here and pushing this thing vertical to pull those guys in. And we get a really good looking vertical cut right through that. <clears throat> that ends up being really the backside A gap here. So I'll rewind this and let it play the full way. That's a really good looking job by, by really everybody here. And our running back makes a couple nice moves and a good jump cut and, and we're off to the races. But that's what we're looking for. That horizontal stretch and then that vertical burst to draw those backers in. Okay, We can get through that second level really quickly before they even know what happened. This is a great teaching tape piece here. This is from our state championship game in 2018. Okay, This team's going to play a lot of cover zero or cover one. <clears throat> and they're going to run a front side tilt nose here. So this nose is supposed to just drive right into our center's hip and then essentially tell us that that ball is not going front side. That's really why you play a technique like this. So what you're going to see here is our running back being knowledgeable of what his cut key is and not giving up on that, okay, and then making a great play here. But the initial pieces of this particular play, 
you're going to see our running back's initial go be a lot more narrow because he knows pre-snap right now, the way that technique is playing, the ball's probably not going over there. I'm going to start pre-bending this thing a little bit. So you're going to see him be really tight at the go on this and then leave his eyes on that guy because what happens here is we actually get a great play out of our center. Their nose guard makes a bit of a mistake and we reach that tilt and our running back makes a beautiful jump cut outside of this here. Um, but we're going to be here and trying to work our combo to this this kind of four or five technique to that backer centers working here guards working through here and tackles got to work through here we're going to read him and then this guy was the extra hat playing their <clears throat> playing their cover one for our quarterback here okay so that's what we're looking at but you can see here as i mentioned this run the running back right now you're going to see as i as i kind of roll this how much tighter his angle and then as soon as he sees that color flash, he knows we just got that guy reached. His eyes are still on him. Color flash is in my face. I'm going to replace. He makes a beautiful jump cut right there into that open window. We've got great blocking all around, and we get a huge run out of it here. Again, the simplicity of the cut key is really important for us. We've got that horizontal displacement going, but we need those running backs to be attacking vertically and getting downhill that's a really good job. All right, here's another one. Again, we're playing against a, a, a heavy, heavy uh, cover one, cover zero team here. On this particular one, we're going to have to go hat on a hat. Our center's identified this linebacker right here has walked up and put his hand on the ground. He's identified him as the Mike. We're going to have a three-man fan call on the front side. And then we've got a three-man essentially reach here on the back side, okay? We're going to leave this guy go over here. <clears throat> this is one of the beauties. It only takes one of your guys to get that horizontal edge to get a win here. Uh, we're going to fan this out, and essentially, this is the read for our running back for his cut right here. Okay, This guy's really already out in a two. He's going to probably play hard A-gap based upon the alignment. Your running back should have been taught and coached that. You know What he's looking at throughout the week as far as scouting reports concerned. We're going to fan this out, knowing this guy's going to probably play this A-gap hard. This running back's already thinking in his mind, this is probably going to be a backside A-gap cut at minimum here, okay? So you're going to see him kind of pre-bend this one a little bit as well. We get a really good three-man fan here. You can see the running back's already pretty tight on his course, and that guard right here just slips through that crease a little bit and gets us that one reach block that we need. The running back has kept this thing really tight. He's, in, he's out here in the front side A gap. Okay, He lined up kind of in that A, B, and that two technique. He comes down and plays A gap. That ball cannot go out here. This, this is all no good. We can't be here. That guy's playing hard in that front side A gap on our center. That ball has to go back side A or further. Okay, And we can do those things quickly here. Really nice job by our, our right guard and a really good job by our running back here. He makes a really nice cut through the middle. And same thing, especially against teams that want to play a lot of cover zero, there's nobody left. If you can get through that crease, there's no one left. And we rip off a big touchdown late in a state semifinal game here with, with a inside zone. Okay, here's another one late in the game against a really good team. Uh, they're going to load the box up to try to stop us as we're trying to kind of run the clock out and preserve our lead right now. This is a great example. If you look at this here, um, we've got our, our wing in the game right now, so he'll be here. We're going to try to work a double uh, on, on 94 to whichever one of these two guys we've identified as the Mike Backer. Looks like we're going to probably push front side, and we're really going to have to end up being solo across the board here now. Uh, they've just got too many hats in the box for us to block them all. We're going to read one. Uh, the beauty of this play here, what I talked about earlier, when you can get at minimum a tie. Again, you don't need your offensive lineman to just be pancaking people all over the place down the field. It certainly helps, but it's not required. Um, if you can get a, a tie but create horizontal displacement, you can have a good play. And we get that on this particular play. We actually get some nice vertical displacement as well, but our running back here and bends that thing all the way back off. And what you're going to see now 
is as this side spikes itself down, he's reading that nose guard. That nose guard's played front side. My eyes now go back side. Okay, as I see these two have both crashed, he's going to get right up into this wall here and then bend this thing off for a huge game ceiling touchdown. It's a really good play by the guys up front and a really nice job by our running back. So I'm going to let that thing play here. We don't get a lot of incredible push, but we get a horizontal displacement and a tie. He gets right up into that wall and makes a great cut off of our right tackle. The free linebacker gets caught up in the mess, and we get a, a huge game ceiling touchdown out of it. So I'll let this play full speed here. Okay, that's just a really good look at a lot of the things we're talking about. Another one from a, a nice tight shot. Here's our running back cut key. Okay, we're going to be working two for two here. The wing's going to block outside backer here. We're stepping to help the center in case this nose guard plays weak A, working here, and then we're working here. Here is our quarterback's read key then on the back side. That nose guard plays hard front side A. That ball's immediately bending. We're already looking back for that backside triangle. He gets right up into the butts. You can see he draws this offensive guard. This linebacker has to step up and play it. We swallow this guy up. There's the seam we're looking for. Makes a really good cut, and we're out the gate. Okay, quick, simple, easy. The coaching points lend itself to a lot of that stuff. We want downhill bursts and aggressiveness as fast as humanly possible. That's what we're shooting for. Okay, here's another one against an even front. We've seen a, a couple odd fronts here, so we'll get you to an even front. All right, we're going inside zone to the right. We're going to be working here on a solo block. We've called 51 the mic. We're working this two technique to 51. We're going to also get a double team on the backside here, working this two to the number three. And then here is your, your read key for the quarterback on the backside. He's reading this big, running back's reading the big defensive tackle here for his, his cut key, okay? This one's pretty, pretty cut and dry, honestly. We get huge horizontal and vertical displacement on this front side two. We get a really great double team right there. We get a pancake block. It doesn't get a lot easier. Is this required? No. Does it help? Absolutely it does. When you create a horizontal and vertical displacement here, you really can have some great zone plays out of it. Again, not necessary, but certainly, boy, do you got to love when your linemen do this type of stuff. We pick up the mic backer pretty easily. That's a big compression that we've created here. Really simple cut. That two played front side B gap. Ball's going at least a gap to potentially backside. We read the triangle really well. We draw the backers in. Really easy vertical cut, and we're through the defense before they can react to it. Here's a look at a quarterback pull now as we wrap this thing up. Um, we, we do get our quarterbacks pulling a pretty fair amount. I would say the overcompensation, if you're running inside zone really well, that read key element to it has been a backbreaker for us. Uh, when you get teams that overcompensate heavily for what your running back's able to do, especially like that last clip there, if your offensive line can create some vertical displacement along with the horizontal, you're going to have teams that have to start really overcompensating to stop your tailback. And when they do, the quarterback read element of this play has really been uh, painful for other teams as far as having to handle it. Uh, here's a look at um, a situation where they get a little bit too nosy after we've been running the ball exceptionally well with our tailback at this point in this game. This is a semi-state championship. Uh, we're really kind of having our way with our tailback in the running game. And what you're going to see here now is, is we've, we've got a little bit different formation going here um, than, than what the previous clips have shown. But we're going to get our, our doubles against this 3-4 look. And our center is going to work with the backside guard to the nose to here. We're going to go ahead and try to seal off this backside four. And our quarterback's actually going to read this hanger player out here. Uh, what you're going to see now is that guy get a little bit too nosy. And, and after we've run the ball so effectively with our tailback, he's going to get himself down in here way too far. And as he crashes that side, our quarterback sees him come in there and, and almost hit our tackle in the hip. He's down in there so tight. Our quarterback's now going to go ahead and pull this on his read key. Coaching point on this for him, very similar to what we talked about with the running back. If you get the pull read on this, you're going to replace the guy that, that you're pulling from. You don't want to take this thing out super, super wide and bow it. 
We want you tight and we want you vertical as fast as possible. We do a really good job on this play. You can see he essentially runs right where that guy was pre-snap. He keeps this ball tight inside the hash and our quarterback has now pulled this and gets a big time touchdown run uh, in the second quarter of a major playoff game for us here. So I'll let this one roll the whole way through so you can see it. But that overcompensation created by, by being a really good inside zone team and making teams have to make changes to stop that or slow that. Uh, if you get some of those and you catch them in that with the zone read, like we run it, it can really hurt uh, teams in a major way. Because if your quarterback is even remotely good with his feet, I think that's a really important coaching point here. Do you need, I get the question a lot, do you need a quarterback that can run? No. All we're looking for out of our quarterback is someone who can average about four yards a carry if they pull. It just needs to be respectable. It's enough that we could move the chains if that was their plan. You can do enough to hurt them. Obviously, this is a, a great rep here from our quarterback, but it doesn't have to be someone who can pull off 25, 30, 40, 50 yard touchdowns. Four or five yards is enough that they're going to have to play their responsibilities or you're going to hurt them. And when they don't play their responsibilities because they're overcompensating for your tailback, then things like this can happen. So um, our inside zone play has been a tremendous play for us. It allows us to be very physical up front, very aggressive. But most importantly, like I said, it's a vertical downhill uh, powerful play for us. It's not a finesse play. We are coming after you and we're attacking you.